Okay, my friends, it's finally happened. They have recognized that my particle is the Schrodinger cat. <laughs> In quantum mechanics, the cat state, named after Schrodinger's cat, is a quantum state composed of two diametrically opposed conditions at the same time. So they're black and white at the exact same time. How could that possibly be? Such as the possibility the cat is alive, which is it's white, or it's dead, it's black, at the exact same time. Well, guess what? Yes, very possible, and we can show it. All right, now this is just beyond outrageous. This is Argonne National Laboratory, government agency. This is quantum science at Argonne. Stephen Gray explains the cat state, quantum effect. This is less than a minute long. Now listen to this. I'm going to open this up. Again, this is Argonne National Laboratory. Listen to this. I'm Stephen Gray. In what physicists like to call a cat state, matter can exist in two opposite conditions at the same time. In Erwin Schrodinger's famous thought experiment, the cat was alive and dead until it was observed. Did you hear that? Alive and dead until it was observed. Precisely what I'm going to show you. Quantum properties of matter allow the different states to coexist in what we call a superposition. At Argonne, we use high-performance computers to simulate the properties of materials that possess these cat states and how they can interact or be entangled with one another. This could help us bring new technologies and marvelous materials out of the realm of science fiction and into our everyday lives. Okay, let's see if we can do that. All right, this is over the top. This right here is Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> It's alive and it's dead at the same time. Matter and antimatter at the same time, attached together. Did we find that? Absolutely we did. We found it in green. And what it is, is two Dirac's together make up a photon. But actually they're this way. They're, they're this way. They're not this way. They're this way. All right. These two are attached together and those two are attached together. And if you look at just one of them, it would be an electron. So what is an electron? That's an electron right there, a Dirac neutrino. All right, it has the electron neutrino and the muon neutrino. Together they make a Dirac neutrino and they can separate and become a, a sterile muon all by itself and these turn into showers. Precisely what they've been looking to see and precisely what we have delivered. And here it is right here. These are the two particles. And this is from Fermilab, not from me. There's an article called What's the Point? And he claims that these two particles are exactly what we found, which are these particles here attached together. They hit head-on protons, so all they see is debris. And these are the smallest particles. Well, when you attach them together, they turn into a photon. Simple as that. You can break them apart, and we did. And here we did it right here completely broken apart. The white is completely separated from the electron showers. Precisely what they want to see. The muons going into a sterile muon, the electron going into a shower. That's it exactly. That. And this is fission back, a fusion here. Fission is when it breaks apart and fusion when it comes back together. In the meantime, you've got raw energy. I think we can harvest that. Luminosity means increased energy. Simple as that. And that's exactly what they're doing now. If you look up, what they just did was to increase the luminosity at CERN. We didn't have to increase it. We got it on steroids. And I mean steroids. All right, you want to see Higgs on steroids right there. That is the white electron showers forming into Higgs fields. That's what they did here with theirs at CERN, but only they just have debris. We have exactly the particles and we can watch them actually form into their own individual particles as these white particles fuse with the black particles. Now here's what they see at CERN. 
We see just this. It's just a bunch of debris. Now, the blue and the green and so forth, they take off really hard because they are deep inside the core. The green, the yellow, uh, I'm sorry, the red sort of just bounces, and that's why you see a ton of red, because they're the loose ones. They don't have a lot of stick to them. The ones that are really stuck inside, when they go, they really go, and they take off. But the red ones, they sort of just bounce off lightly. That's why they all congeal in the center like that. But all they can find out is these two particles, wherever they are. They see these two particles, they just don't know where they came from. We know they're part of light, because that's what we started with, was photons of light. This is what the Large Hadron Collider was trying to do in 1978. They had a special commission to look into photon collisions, they never figured out. All you have to do is put them through the Venturi, right here, just like that. It's just nothing more than a very finely tuned funnel device which forces the fields. And there's a field around each one of these particles. That's why this one's starting to glow. When they come through the air, here's what happens. Particles like that. You see this one here is not glowy. That one's not glowy. This one here is glowy. What's well, coming this way, and these little particles in front of it smash into it causing it to glow. You see those little particles? Alright, those are making that thing charge up. And what will happen is it'll flip. It'll go like that and it'll go flip. And then that one will start to charge. That's the up spin and down spin. And that's the muon wobble. We'll just keep doing that as it goes. That's the nature of light. It is a particle which is actually it's four particles. There's a, two muons and two electron neutrinos. That is what they call a gluon, and it's also called an electron, because nobody ever knew about the dark side. They always thought an electron was just a glowy part. No, it's both. It's Schrodinger's cat. And here's another Schrodinger's cat, so we got a cat fight going on there. And this explains the neutrino flavors. That's a neutrino. That's a neutrino. Uh, this has got this way, this one goes this way, then you got photons, then you got some oddball looking things, and then it explodes at the Venturi. That's because they're backing up on each other. And that's exactly what they see at CERN, can't understand it. They say, how could they be changing flavors? It's the same particle, but back here, it had such and such a weight, here it had such and such a weight, here it had such and such a weight, here it has su they call them all different flavors. Well, they're different values of energy because they're being pushed back at a different pressure. The greens have the same thing, neutrinos, and turn it into photons. The same particle, it's just more, it was tighter to the nucleus when it spit out. All right, we're going to try to really get a good school going with playlists for courses and try to interact with students and all that. But what you want to do is when you're going to do some research, don't make a mess like I just did showing you all those papers. That goes back 50 years ago. What you want to do is keep everything sort of together so that you can go back and look at it. Now, this to me, I just splashed all this stuff in here. I do all kinds of research and I put a little tab for each one, history and autism and basic atoms and all kinds of stuff. Make sure you document what you do. And leave yourself enough room between things so you can go back and add or make a little bit of changes. Otherwise, you have nothing to support what you did. Then when you go to a prospective employee, you say, look, if you want to see what I did, I went to Mud Fossil University, the best university in history, and here's how I recorded what I did. And by that time, trust me, they will understand that you did go to the best university in the history of humanity. The most honest, the most validated, and it changes literally everything. History is nothing like we were told. Geology is 100% wrong. The, the, 